Now you might have thought that we've finished putting wood onto this roof structure and to be honest, so did we. I'm gonna let Ricky fully explain what wood it is and why we need it. However, I am gonna get treating it because woodworm is a real issue here and I don't want any beasties coming along and munching holes into it. Right, so to bring you guys up to speed, we are unfortunately having to retrofit a couple of purlins. So they are kind of a support that runs the same way as the ridge beam and the uh, wall plates, but it supports the rafters kind of at halfway point between the ridge and the wall plates. The reason for that is because we changed our mind partway through the roof build. We're now having plasterboard. We also, well, I also, the royal we, I also <laughs> messed up with the OSB decking order and we ended up getting 18 mil instead of 11 mil which added another extra weight. Then we also had to get a different roof tile because the ones we were looking at before you couldn't get the half tiles or the finishing tiles that we're currently waiting for. So we changed the brand and it ended up being almost a kilogram heavier per tile. So across all of the hundreds of tiles on the roof, that's a lot of extra weight. The current timbers that we've got on the roof, it's big enough to take this weight. However, there's not really much tolerance in it. And we want to make sure that over time, this thing isn't going to sag. So we're being extra safe. We're putting the purlins in now, and then we can just know that this roof is going to last. We know this is the wrong way to do it. However, we have no choice. <laughs> so ordinarily you would put it in before you put the rafters on, but this time we're having to try and squeeze it in underneath. It's definitely become a bit of a dumping ground in here, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. Since we've been working outside on the roof. So I think before anything else, before we can actually start working in here, we need to have a tidy up because it's an absolute state. <laughs> down here now and we're just basically trying to figure out how the best way is to maneuver them into position. Yeah this is a job that neither of us want to do. These purlins are basically the same size as the two beams that made up our ridge beam. So they're big, they're heavy, they're cumbersome. When we got the ridges up we obviously did it step by step hmm. outside the building which is ideally what we would have done with this but that's not the situation we're in so we're thinking on the shoulder, up a ladder. That's me, what are you doing? <laughs> well, you on my shoulders. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm just gonna keep it as low as possible for as long as possible until, and just keep inching it forwards. But you don't want any height from me, do you? No. Okay. Three, two, one. Okay, that's yeah. as far as it can go. Okay. Okay. Grand. Ready to give it another go? Yeah. Have I mentioned how much I like heights? That is 
considerably more difficult than we thought it was going to be. So we've got one end up there. The issue is this end because it doesn't fit to go up here. We need to come on an angle to be able to get it up. Then it's going to reach a point where we need to get it back over and on. And obviously I can't do that with the ladder. So I think we're going to move the scaffolding over to this side. Then we get it up on the scaffolding and then hopefully walk it across the platform and put it where it needs to be. Right, so they're up in place. That was a bit of a struggle, but they're up now. In the wrong place though, because we actually need to build uh, the wall up a bit to support them and push them up against the rafters. Victoria's a bit nervous that they have been left a bit precariously. My brain knows that there's no space for the wood to actually slip and drop, but they are effectively just sort of sandwich pressing against the ring beam. So I'm not going to be walking underneath them <laughs> necessarily. <laughs> they can't go anywhere, don't worry. Yeah, all right. <laughs> well, it's a gloomy one today, extremely foggy. So obviously now the purlins are up kind of wedged in place really and we now need to get them up into the actual position they're going to be so we can get them fixed so we need to measure out to find the distance between the wall plate and the ridge beam then we've got a couple of acro props we're going to prop one of them up get it in place then once it's all propped up and in place i can then build up stone around it to hold it in Okay, so it's up into position. It was a little bit hairy there for a second, but it's fine, it's stable again. But before we actually tilt it upwards so that we can actually wedge it up against the rafters, we've realized we definitely need some extra assistance because it wants to basically roll back down because of the angle. Do it feel safe and secure now? Yes, it's still, it's about, five mil off where it needs to go, but we can do that with the props. Nice. Poppy. Yeah. Oh no.
smell so nice in here? It's because I'm in here. Mm. <laughs> I think it's more likely the dying basil <laughs> over there. It does smell so nice in here, actually. starting to look wreathish if you can look beyond all of the tie wraps. Very wreathy, if that's a word. <laughs> One thing I have forgotten, ambiance. Just setting the mood. I wish that technology had come along far enough to have smell vision right now because these little eucalyptus sprigs, is that what you bunches? Poses. Posies? God, it smells so good. Would you care for a Christmas joke? <laughs> Go on then. Is this one of your own? <laughs> no, I've learned my lesson there. I'm not a creator of good jokes. One moment, please. How do sheep say Merry Christmas to each other? Mm, I don't know. Fleece Navida. Oh, <laughs> Such a good one. What kind of money do elves use? Mm, I don't know. Jingle bills. Oh, these are terrible. <laughs> no, they're so good. Okay, final one. Gonna end on a high. What do you get when you cross a snowman with a vampire? I don't know. Frostbite. Oh. <laughs> Are you happy with it? I think it looks nice. I think it needs a little bit more sparkle to make it properly Christmassy. So I'm going to paint these ball things that came off the oak trees. The only problem is this is my only metallic sparkly paint. The nail varnish. <laughs> so it might take me a minute to do that. <laughs> So we're just digging through this big pile of stone because we're trying to find some that are going to be suitable to prop up the purlin. So I've just whipped around and I've screwed through the side of every rafter into the purlin to secure it, which was incredibly awkward because of how limited the space is where the OSB roof deck is. Now I'm off to mix up some mortar and then I can crack on with this stonework. So the original plan was to conceal the ring beam with stone all the way around, all around the inside walls and all around the outside walls. But that was just going to be a massive task that was going to take a really long time. The reason we were doing it is because we just wanted to see stone everywhere and have it look more traditional. But this project is already running way behind where we want it to be in terms of time. so 
this seems to be a really quick win. If instead of stonework around everywhere here, we brick it and render it, and then we'll paint the render a similar color to the stone to have it all in keeping. We've seen loads of cases in local villages where they've done this and it still looks really nice. So yeah, this stonework that I'm doing now is just to get it in, keep the pearl in safely in place. And then that is also gonna be rendered over once the brickwork's done. There we go, so that's one side done. The camera that I was using to film that, I hadn't realized it had turned off. So here's the finished product. Like I say, it's gonna be bricked in all around it, all the way up to the rafter level. And just doing that small amount of stonework there definitely, uh, what's the word? Confirmed to me that we're making the right decision to brick everything and just get it done as quick as possible because yeah, stonework takes time. And I just wanna get this building done and finished and be working on the interior things, so yeah, good call. We very nearly forgot to mention, we were able to collect our olive oil last night. Our share of it is about 60 litres, so plenty to keep us going. <laughs> and I think it's time for a little taste test. So if you'd just like to leave your sample at the front desk. Oh man. <laughs> That's put me right <laughs> off here. It's almost dehydrated. <laughs> Go on then, first taste test. Tastes good. <laughs> good? It was worth all the hard work. <laughs>